It's Friday, June 18th, 2021, and you're listening to episode 572 of Fear the Boot, a show about tabletop role-playing games and a little bit more. Running time for this episode is 50 minutes. Welcome to Fear the Boot. My name is Dan. And this is not Brodor, who didn't show up today. Yeah, we don't know where Brodor... we know where he's at. Well, we have our theories. He's in a haze of totally legal smoke. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Totally legal smoke? Totally legal smoke. Totally legal smoke. Yes. So, yeah, right now, Brodor, we don't know for a fact. We actually don't know where the heck he is. (laughs) I'm actually a little worried, but all we know is Brodor... We're assuming he's in kind of a purple haze at the moment. <laughs> right. Beyond that, we honestly don't, don't know. know. So, continue. And on. I'm Chad. <laughs> and this is Julia. All right. So, we got at least the three of us. So, we're going to continue in this episode talking about what we started last episode. In the last episode, we talked about what we had experienced during our COVID isolation, lockdown, whatever you want to call it, where we got more into online gaming and what our positive and negative experiences were. And it's been interesting, even in the early conversation, to hear how much that resonated with people, which mm-hmm. I it always surprises me which of our shows get traction and which ones don't, because it's never the ones I think. Right. It's, well, it was only because I was back on. Well, I mean, yeah. let's be honest. Well, yeah, that's a huge, huge, huge draw. It's our number one draw. In fact, our listenership dropped almost nothing during your hiatus. <laughs> right. But so now we're going to talk about the other side of that, which is... Now, at least here, we are able to move back to in-person gaming and what our thoughts are on the re-entry into the gaming space. Now, before we dig into that, one quick announcement, which is Fear the Con Online number three is coming up. And I don't have Wayne here to recite all the details for me, (laughs) but I will put a link in the show notes to the relevant stuff. So even though I suck at giving you information live, so so to speak, mm-hmm. I will give you the information in the show notes. So it is there. You... And I, I will say, too, I was talking to Zylo. Him and Wayne are the ones who are putting this on and organizing it. I was talking to Zylo yesterday. And we were chatting about it. Just want to let people know, too, that it's not just role-playing games, right? So Zylo is running a board gaming event, too, using Tabletop Simulator. And anybody can set that up as well. Yeah. So also it can be platform agnostic as well. So it's it's not if you think, well, I'm not big into Roll Twenty, and I'm into this other stuff, and so this is online. Like no, it, it's all these other platforms as well. The game master chooses what platform they yeah. want, if any platform at all. Maybe it's just a channel where we're talking. There's also something that was done with the previous ones that we should definitely do again this year which is if you are setting up an event, please specify what, if any, technologies you're going to need. So if this is going to be like, hey, you need Discord, headset, and mic, put that in the game description Mm -hmm. or something. If they're going to need Tabletop Simulator, put that in the game description because I'd hate for people to show up and either A, not be able to play at all, or B, waste half your gaming set-aside time trying to fight with technical issues, which I'm sure is going to happen anyway, but whatever. And let's at least make a good There's a mic effort. Check. There's a mic check event before the con as well. At least there was last oh. year. I'm sure there'll be. Good idea. Yeah. Yeah. So once again, check the show notes for links, because even if I'm terrible about <laughs> remembering this, when I go to put it together, I promise you, I will give you that information. Yeah. So, and big shout out to both Wayne and Zyla. Yes. Yeah. Huge. Thank yeah. you to them for their effort in this. It is awesome. They're doing this much love for that. So, mm-hmm. Uh, We really hope you guys will support this. All right, so let's get into the topic for today, which is re-entering the gaming space. Julia, let's go ahead and start with your point, which you threw at me before we started recording, which is, do you want to set this up or do you want me to? I have a feeling that everybody is probably going to experience at least a few people that are not comfortable Mm -hmm. being in person and or coming into your home without a mask yeah um so i think we should talk about how you handle that like what would you do i mean personally i have such an inviting space that i'm fine with whatever mm-hmm. but there could be people that's a problem so i thought it would be a good topic to talk yeah. about because it is tough <laughs> yeah well it will be because i mean there's going to be some people who just say on one extreme they don't feel safe for whatever reason mm-hmm. and, and well even if like look at it this way everybody at your table's vaccinated and everybody's coming in we're all fully vaccinated it's life back to normal. And one person comes in, they're wearing a mask and they kind of want to sit distance, even though they're vaccinated. Mm-hmm. 
don't make them uncomfortable. Right. Because it's... they have been wearing a mask for a year. Yeah. This is... Habits this is, take time to unlearn. This is a traumatic year for everyone. Right. Yes. You have to be gentle. Don't be like, well, get the hell out of my house. We're done. We beat this. We're finally here. He's into it. Yeah. Yeah, you know? for sure. People, There's a lot of people who had a lot of hard time in this past year. Yeah. And if someone had those concerns, you know... Be respectful, let mm-hmm. it go. But yeah, these are habits that people have spent a lot of time mm-hmm. stuck in and a lot of time doing, and everyone processed it in a different way and handled it a different way. And if these are your friends, these are your gaming buddies, I hope you got <laughs> love for them. Right. And I hope part of that is you can respect wherever they're at. And as long as it's reasonable, do your best yeah. to accommodate those concerns. I mean, if they don't want to share a glass with you or sit three inches from your face or make out between <laughs> rolls, then <laughs> I mean, maybe you're a hugger and maybe getting your friends are back now and you can't just can't wait to hug them. Maybe some of your friends just aren't ready for that. Yeah. yeah. You're a handshaker. Yeah. Maybe you're living one of the countries that's more affectionate than America and certain parts of mm-hmm. Western Europe. And you're from someplace like, I don't know, South America or Italy or something like that. And people kiss on the cheek. I don't know. Just respect what people are are willing to accept. Well, and we already have the technology. So if somebody's not comfortable showing up, it's not that hard to just set them up at the table with their face on a computer. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've done it for years because we had a lot of military people Mm -hmm. in our game. So we got really used to just always having somebody on the screen. It's not that hard. Mm -hmm. So the second one that I was thinking about. And we talked about this a little bit last episode, but I want to drill into it a little bit more, is neglected gaming space. (laughs) Now, I have not been to my office at work in 14 months. Mm -hmm. In fact, I have. I know. I was. I took pictures. Yes. I was the first person in my area that was sent home because my boss's boss found out I had been in Reno for Gamma Mm -hmm. and told me not to come into the office. And so I was the first person in my area, even though I did not have COVID, Mm -hmm. uh, to be kicked out of the office. And I have not been there in a year and two months. There's a lot of dead plants. Oh, yeah. There was no, like, creepy growing fungus food that was left out. Mm -hmm. A lot of dead plants. I actually, speaking of that, I just read an article where a woman came back to her office and mice had infested their office and ate all of her snacks in her drawer and pooped in it. (laughs) Yeah. So, neglected gaming space... (laughs) Yeah, well, I mean, you do some checks. I actually just did <laughs> last week after we did our recording. Chad and I did a real quick yeah. patrol Wasn't of the game space. In there? Oh, the, there, there was like there was almonds? snacks almonds? in there. Yeah. So here's the thing. Those last a while. So we had to throw out some snacks. We just kind of look at the table, and especially now that we're hoping to improve the recording mm-hmm. arrangement in there for the actual play, we're probably going to need to replace the table with one that better accommodates the mics. And look at it this way. When this whole thing started and the lockdown started happening, Dan and I, a year ago, went through and cleaned out the room. We were like, this food's going to spoil because we had stuff that it would not keep. Right? right. And so we're like, OK, we threw it away. Well, like Dan said, about a week or so ago, we did the same thing and we found stuff we missed. Yeah. We're not messy people. So if you think your gaming space is pristine and clean, it's probably not. Probably not. No. Now our gaming space is my dining room, which so well, it's, it's clean. Yeah, it's be different. <laughs> We've got a dry race board in there that has the Brodor no list. Now that's tattooed on that thing. Bingo. Yeah. The only thing that will take this off alcohol is re- exactly it's isopropyl alcohol. That's the only thing that will mm-hmm. get dry erase. That's been on there that long. That off. was another thing at the office is that everybody had all these whiteboards that had all this project info on it. Yeah. yeah. Projects that were done a year ago that are now tattooed on the whiteboards. Yeah. I wonder how many people have gaming stuff on their walls or on dry erase boards. I bet it'd be interesting. <laughs> well, or everybody should you, take pictures. If you've got play them. mats or if you do like <laughs> yeah. tactics. Tiles or whatever, and you had a dry erase little yeah, dungeon map on there. It yep. exists on there now. I hope you. That's a permanent location. Yeah, yeah there's a, there's a. Lot. I hope you have a campaign set up that occurs in one dungeon. <laughs> there's a bunch of people who are listening to this right now who are like, "What in the hell are they talking about?" Because like Julia and myself, we don't have a dedicated gaming space. It's our dining room. It's my dining room. Yeah. Right? You, Dan, have a dedicated gaming space. There are people out there who have these rooms in their homes. That they never go into unless, unless they're unless gaming. A game. Well, yeah. even if you do have rooms you go into, I still think there are going to be, and maybe we can make this its own bullet point, 
the gaming resources, which may not mm. be a physical location, but like we we're talking about the dry erase boards, the battle maps, the mm. snacks. When we were gaming at Pat and Bess, those well, years back, mm. we had dedicated snack storage space. Yep. And every so often we would check it and purge it. And it was just mm-hmm. part of gaming there. We never went through a period of 14 months where we just <laughs> ignored it. it. Yeah. yeah. Along those lines, mm. this is something where everybody should have been chipping in always, but now maybe people need to chip in a little bit more. If you have a snack stash, oh, mm, yeah. that it's snack stash is probably no good. And if you're trying to refill from nothing, this is not about an incremental, okay, this one bag is stale. Let's throw it out and replace it with this one. You're starting fresh. Everyone, please be polite to whoever hosts that or whoever in your group is responsible for filling that. And Mm -hmm. it would be great if everyone brought a little bit of something to add back to that stockpile. You know what my snack stash is? Because I feed my group, right? Me too. I cupcake them usually. Yeah, I'm really big. So (laughs) nobody ever needs to like bring food. My snack stash is Wayne's f***ing Diet Pepsi. He has (laughs) one plastic bottle like that's the big the the, the hand i don't know how i haven't drank so in years i don't even know how big that is a A liter a a liter i guess it's the smaller one that he brings in this diet pepsi and he puts it in my refrigerator and then he takes the diet pepsi single one diet pepsi that he had left last week and drinks that and drinks that and so there's a goddamn diet pepsi well in my refrigerator and no one in my house drinks soda but that's probably because he has to have a diet. He and just in case you don't have an option. Yes. I and, get it. Yeah. I've had gestational diabetes. Mm-hmm. You start to carry diet soda around with oh, you. Sure. <laughs> but yeah, I agree. Like I, I think that that is a big thing for me is that mm-hmm. I always provided a lot of stuff for my gaming group. Yeah. So I always liked it when people brought, I felt good when people brought stuff. Now I don't have a stash. Normally people just brought small stuff mm-hmm. and then just ate it while they were there. But yeah, for sure. Pitch in. Yeah. Get a fund. Mm-hmm. A I, GoFundMe for gaming snacks. Not everybody is like <laughs> Julie and I, where we are possessed by the spirits of 50s housewives <laughs> and just have this uncontrollable urge to cook for people. I'm going to have the fattest grandchildren on the planet. I will just keep feeding them and feeding them. I mean, Saturday, Dan came over and I cooked for him with bare feet in my kitchen. I mean, look how skinny he is. I know. <laughs> I mean, you got to put some meat on I got to put some meat on him. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. I, was, I, I had a, a really point. obscene joke I'm not going to make. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, well, like I was saying, though, not everybody is like Julie and I. Yeah. So if you have a snack stash, please contribute to it. Yeah. Or if you don't, and you still don't have people like Julie and I who just love cooking for people, maybe it's a good time to start one. Mm-hmm. This is a good opportunity to start some new kind traditions. Ooh, that's yeah. that's yeah. a great one. I love that. Let's mm-hmm. start fresh. Yeah. yeah. Sit down. Well, excuse the pun. Not literally sit down, but start up an email or a Discord mm-hmm. chat or something. Whatever you do with your gaming buddies, mm-hmm. and say, look, what was working, what wasn't at the social level. Do we maybe need to start some yeah. new traditions? Let's do the new tradition of Chris Hussey wears pants to gaming. Precisely. Oh. Pants yeah. and underwear. And, and, pa- and, and yeah. And pants that are of the correct but size. If he's wearing <laughs> pants, how would you know he's wearing underwear? Because there's a check beforehand. It's, oh. it's legally required in this state. Oh. And, yeah, in this okay. state and at yeah. least 13 others. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a okay. black light involved. It's. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have to post a little crimson warning right. in my window. Yeah, this he... is why he lives in a different state from us, and we're yeah. very happy about that. Precisely. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, yeah, exactly. Chris and the Crimson Pumpkin. We did an entire show about it. And, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's a great idea. Is that mm-hmm. route and say, hey, is there a tradition we should start that maybe one person is always stuck bringing the snacks? Let's change that up. Or maybe something about the space you're gaming in. Is it working? Is there a way that we can change it up? Yeah. That even like little things like, you know, hey, guys, I know we have this tradition of everybody takes home their character sheet. But, you know, half the time you guys forget to bring it. Why don't we uh, start a folder here and yeah. we'll, we'll just yeah. keep the character sheets here? What do you guys think of that? Because so many things are baked in. Groups have problems. I'm not talking big, huge drama. I'm talking like people taking their character sheets yeah, home yeah. and not bringing them back. But groups have these traditions that are like baked in that nobody even thinks about. Like, why do you do that? Why does everyone take their character sheet home? I don't know. It's that's it just what, happens. It's just, that's There's what we did no in our reason. last group. And so that's mm-hmm. what we started. Now is the time to reassess some of that stuff because the minor annoyance. Now is a perfect opportunity to correct that. Agreed. Wayne, the goddamn <laughs> Diet Pepsi. <laughs> Another one is I think you should accept that your first gathering 
may be a total wash. Oh, yeah. Don't expect anything on your first in-person. Because this may be the first time a substantial number of these people have seen each other face-to-face in a very long time. And even if they've been keeping up with each other yeah. electronically or whatever, it's still different. It's still different. And this was a we are not going to allow Chad and Brandon to sit next to each other <laughs> or across from each other. You cannot stop our bro love. <laughs> so this is going to actually be a major point that I was going to bring up. We were supposed to gain Blades in the Dark in person for the first time in over a year, over a year last week. Mm-hmm. And it didn't happen. Brodor got sick. Eric's car broke down. Eric's is Brandon's ride. We could have done it remote, but I'm like, no, I'm done with remote. I, I played the little bitch card. I'm like, I had a busy day at work. We're just not going to do it. But that aside, usually what I do is if I can manage it, everybody gets together at X time. Mm-hmm. And then I give them a half hour. I say, we're going to start at this time. And then I give it a half hour. I give it a right. half hour for everyone to work out their stuff and to talk. And to, then I reel it down. I'm like, okay, guys, let's do the thing. I was thinking all week leading up to that because of this episode that we we had dropped previously that I would have a story of how that went. Unfortunately, I can't tell you how it went because we didn't do it. But I was like, a half hour is not going to be enough. These no. guys have not seen each other. We have not talked and been face to face for over a year. It's almost like you need a non session. Right. Like, let's sit around and bullshit and we'll talk about our character. Let's play cards. Let's get, like, kind of back in the zone. At least have low X. Brandon Speard. I'm I'm sorry. (laughs) Yeah, okay. This is why you're going to be sitting. I'm sorry, what was that first Caddy Wampus? Caddy Wampus. Caddy Wampus. That's... I had yes. an old lady say that, and it shocked me. Oh, my God. My mom me. is an old lady who says that. Really? I've it never was, heard anyone else say I it. had to look it up to see if that was a real it phrase. Is. or It pure, is. It is. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it is. was like the yes. old lady who ran the gift shop at the hotel that Mike worked at when we first started dating. So, Caddy like, wow. Wampus. And I was like, what? God, I wonder if my mom knows her. <laughs> I mean, she's pro- Never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> but- <laughs> I don't want to be heartless. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think you should come in necessarily with the expectation that you are certainly not oh, going to yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would Except. just say, yeah, have that unpucker moment where you're like, yeah. you know what, it may not happen, or maybe it's only going to be an hour. And if you're the game master, yeah. I would have your game prepared such that, okay, right. this is not this be game, the big bad ending fight or the big moment. Well, fine, even if it does. But make sure there are plenty of save points mm-hmm. and checkpoints along the way yeah, so where stop off. If these people are really intense and we do four hours or 12 hours or whatever your gaming group does, boom, there it is. But at the same time, if people just want to socialize and jack around and all we get through mm-hmm. is an hour, great. Write your plot such that there is a, a checkpoint in about an hour of game mm-hmm. material where you can say, OK, at least we broke the ice right. we got together we got past the first kiss between chad and brandon <laughs> well, and we can go home now many <laughs> <laughs> you also have to keep in mind that people game differently in person versus virtual mm-hmm. so somebody who maybe is a lot more boisterous of a character online might not be in person so you, they may need some time to get used to that too yeah. like all of a sudden their character could completely change so make sure you're on top of that i guess yeah, that's actually really good advice i hadn't thought of because that's one of my weaknesses as a game master Mm -hmm. is when i believe i have an understanding of a person's character and this is like well into a campaign right i have a an understanding of a a person's character their personality and such and then i'm kind of tailoring the game around that and then maybe they're in a mood that day they had Mm -hmm. a bad day at work and something changed and this happy boisterous character where i'm gonna have them meet the little princess of the king so they can get some information because the happy boisterous bard is gonna charm the little princess and blah 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 it's gonna be a fun scene and they are just like i'm not talking that brat are you kidding me (laughs) let's go kill something you know do you think that that is my kryptonite Mm -hmm. as a game master my game falls and it's not the player's fault it's my fault my games fall apart when that happens so let me ask you guys a question and i don't think this is going to be true for us but given the fact that it's been a year to a year and a half of very very difficult times and depending on where you're at in the world it may or may not be winding down or maybe winding up so and we're not going to get into that because not, not all of us can live in new zealand yeah exactly this is not what the show's about so we're not going to get into any of that but the point being though it has been a long break people change yeah oh yeah 
I mean, I mean, I don't. No, <laughs> I'm great all the time. We've, we've, actually, I do have a whole thing I could do on that, but no, actually, you don't change a whole lot. And that's one of the wonderful things about you. Um, but in that amount of time, living potentially, potentially mm. under a lot of emotional, financial, or interpersonal distress, I don't know what people have been through. People that, have lost jobs. People have lost died. jobs. People, yeah, yeah developed addictions, mm -hmm. developed mental illnesses. I mean, mm -hmm. things have happened, okay? And depending on the group and who's in it and what they've been through, there may be a readjustment phase sure. mm -hmm. where people get back together and they're not quite who you remember. Right. Yeah? Because shit happened. Mm -hmm. And it's like PTSD. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. I, it, it wasn't sure. depending on the person, depending on the person. It, it may be minor. It could just be little quirks they've picked up to all the way up to radical changes in their right. life and personality and anywhere in between to, I don't know, maybe they're resilient or whatever the case is. And this whole thing didn't affect them at all. I don't know. But I think it helped in our case mm -hmm. because we still kept at least in some contact between doing the show, doing the AP our remotely. Our practiced the, the pod thing. And I'm not going to debate whether it was good or bad or indifferent, mm -hmm. but it's the, done. It's done. We yeah. did it. And we, we did very controlled pods. And we kept face to face with a certain amount of people at right. certain times. And that helped us a lot. Right. Like Not Dan was everybody part, could do that. Yeah. yeah, Dan was part of our bubble. Mm -hmm. Like he would come over and do Chinese days with Precisely. us and yep. hang out. I think that's something that you have to account for. Mm -hmm. And you, I don't think you can totally plan for it because people are complicated. And it's going to be hard to predict precisely what's going to happen yeah. and how people are going to act. Or mm -hmm. you know what? Maybe people haven't changed that yeah. much. But they're just under so much individual stress well, I was that when you put them in a room together, somebody just snaps. Or, and and you have to control yourself, too. Like, I believe we just gave a bunch of good advice. Mm -hmm. And I also believe we just gave an equal amount of bad advice, bad advice saying the same thing. Right. From the perspective of you have people coming over for your game and Fear the Boots said all this stuff and they were right. And it's cool and you're doing all this stuff, but everything's fine. Nothing's changed. Everyone's cool. You're going to you have a great get, game. You get right down and, to gaming. There's no social time. But fear the boot, those f just got you all wound up and, and twisted. Yeah. <laughs> okay. well, so, Fair point. But it's it is good advice, but breathe. Yeah. I, and I think that's something that I should emphasize is all of these things ought to be cooked to flavor, yep. mm -hmm. cooked yeah, to taste absolutely. based on your situation, your group. Mm -hmm. These are things to consider. Yep. These are not things to create a checklist is, out yeah, of. This that is not you, FTB 9000. Yeah, this is yeah. just things to consider mm -hmm. is don't have a lot of expectations about the game or the interpersonal interactions because it has been a while and it's been a period of life and people change anyway. But this has been a uniquely stressful period, in, mm -hmm. at least within our epoch of time. And people are going to come into this and it may be difficult to plan exactly what's going to go down. And I think you do have to be prepared to take a deep breath and to reassess some things or to let some things work out or just kind of accept mm -hmm. that it's like reintroducing any people after a long period of time. The best thing you can do is take it slow and accept maybe it'll be the same thing and you pick up right where you left off like nothing happened. Yeah. Or maybe you have to create something new. I don't know. Or maybe it doesn't work at all anymore. Maybe something happened and somebody changed the way you... I, I don't know. I still think the best advice is if it works out logistically, that first night, don't role play. Yeah. Play cards. Yeah. Play cards. Hang out. Well, and like dinner. I said, or even just talk about the campaign again. Like, yeah. just get in the mood for it. Talk about Absolutely. it. Talk about the things that yeah. happened. Talk about your character or, like, this is the time to iron out any any concerns you had to at the same yeah. time about the game. Like, I don't like where my character's going. Great. We can it's a deal with this. Time you know? Change. Yeah. I think that a lot of people are going to be making the mistake, though, of saying, well, no, it's going to be fine. I mean, we have been gaming. The virtually, game, yeah. The, the game never stopped. We just right. did it virtually. It's different. It's different. It's I cannot reiterate this enough. And I think that there's people out there who are going to think that, oh, well, Chad just hates online gaming and he doesn't understand what it's like. I don't care. It's different. It, it is it really totally is. different. So, yeah, you know, there may be a, an adjustment point. Well, let me give you a very, very simple way in which it's different. In our current, I can't touch Brandon's beard. Well, virtually. in our current setup of gaming, <laughs> one of the things that we've been doing is on a set time interval, let's take a three-minute, everyone go to the bathroom break. 
Mm-hmm. That works because we're in different houses and have our own bathrooms. Have them, right, right. right. <laughs> we cannot all run into the bathroom at once and try not to cross the streams. Yeah. I mean, I guess we could. I mean, we're guys. Ooh. I would really we appreciate it. Boy Scouts. So. I, I would say, I would appreciate it if you guys didn't. <laughs> but That's a bonus episode there. <laughs> Things Julie didn't realize dudes did until they she heard what? him on Fear in the Boot. Have you ever met a dude? <laughs> <laughs> We're scum. Yeah. <laughs> there are some urban myths about what kids do, males, men, yeah, yeah. young boys do growing up. people with penises. Yes. <laughs> the, I know only one person out of all the male friends I have who has actually participated Never mind. This is this is really going negative episode. Like I said, maybe we, we need for that Never mind. I'm All sure right. Negative episode. Yeah. Patreon.com slash fear the boot. I don't know when we'll do this, but okay. My next one. Do you guys know what a bob is? I try not to. No. Okay. So I guarantee you know what a bob is. You just may have never heard it by that term. Do you know what a bug out bag is? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So for anyone who's not familiar with a certain subculture of paranoid Americans, a bug out bag and by the way, jokes aside, bug out uh, bags a good idea. Everybody should actually, actually have one. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. The CDC, the the Federal Good Emergency Lord, Management, yeah. Department of Homeland Security, they all recommend everyone should have a bob or a bug out bag. Yeah. Let me explain what that is. A bug out bag is a bag that already has packed in it the really, really basic supplies you would need to survive for a couple of days. Yeah, I think it's like two days it's three days three three days so you have like a solar blanket a pair of dry socks waterproof matches 100 bucks yeah a a little bit of food some a couple bottled waters if you have prescription meds have a few days of those and And we're not talking like grapes as food yeah yeah, 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 like yeah yeah, i'm talking like like, non-perishable just (laughs) non-perishable foods we're we're talking like pemmican leftover fried chicken i'm scared of what my bob would be with a kid it's like here's some like toys entertainer and shut up baby though (laughs) well you actually most parents i know with a baby actually already have yeah we already have a bob yeah for sure but it's 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 the greatest day of my life i didn't have to carry it around anymore my recommendation here is when i'm just using that as a placeholder Put one together for your first face-to-face game session. Not survival supplies. <laughs> okay. What I'm talking about is your gaming, your gob. <laughs> your gob. So your not gaming. a bob. Yeah. It, it, it's a gob. Yeah, out yeah, yeah. Bag. Your, your game. Game out bag. Game oh. out bag. So, like, what or you're your, saying is you know, your dice, your pencils. Your bingo. Gob, because, okay, hey, everybody's here. Cool. We're ready to go. Who's got a pencil? Oh, geez. Where did I leave who, pencil? Who remembered their character sheet. Oh, crap. Mine's online, and it requires a password that's saved in Chrome, mm-hmm. and I don't have my laptop with me. da 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 I haven't touched dice Sync up your Chrome. Year. Create yeah. a checklist of all the things you need to game. Do you need your mini? Because you're not on Rule 20 anymore. Mm-hmm. If you're Thank playing God. a game that has minis, put that in a little bag or box or whatever. Mm-hmm. Put your dice in there. If you have Benny chips or whatever it is your game requires, put those in there. Your pencil, your pencil sharpener. One of the things got me thinking about that when we did a patrol of that room. Do you know what the game room is missing? What? Chairs? Well, no. The chair. Well, yes, the chairs roll in there. We're going to consolidate through Hoarding City and Gaming Room to one room. But something much simpler, we use probably more than our character sheets. There's no three by five note cards left. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Right now, simple thing. Simple, stupid yeah. thing. But those are a huge <laughs> part. Note passing and private, mm-hmm. the real game conversation. Right. That's a huge part of how, the culture of how we hear yeah. game. Here, the R, SOG, Blades right. in the Dark group. Mm-hmm. That's how we do it. I didn't even think about this for oh, quite a while. Mm-hmm. And yet in making that mental list of what do I use in the course of face-to-face game, it's something like, oh, yeah, those aren't there anymore. Your checklist, too, is that we use these plastic, hard plastic table tents yep. with our characters written on them. Well, we were playing a different game a year ago, and getting back to the dry erase stuff, that is tattooed yeah. on there now. Yeah, no, I actually did clean that I off because I also use those for my West Marches game. Mm. So actually, they're getting redrawn and erased much more regularly now, yeah. but I did have to isopropyl them. Mm-hmm. I could not get these guys of glass character names off there, which you can imagine how... Mm-hmm. 
some of my family members would have reacted if my youngest nephew had gotten Brodors with his no list <laughs> on the back. Ooh. And so, yeah, I had to go down to the bathtub with a thing of yeah. isopropyl alcohol and pour it over it. And yeah. It soak. Scrub that crap off while my eyes and nose and ears mm-hmm. were all burning and bleeding. Not literally. Well, so, so most of most of the girl gamers probably already have a GOB. I'm just saying, like all of my stuff just stays in like this mm-hmm. bag that I have. And Mike, I always end up having to throw all his crap in mine. Yeah. Like mine's always ready to go, and then he's like, "Here's my dice and all my stuff." And I'm like, "Women Get are your own. women are." And We're this is going to be a real broad brush here. Women are really good about nesting. Oh yeah, they I about nest hard gathering things. <laughs> and so, I never believed it until Dawn got pregnant. Oh yeah, and then there there comes a point during pregnancy when most women clean, clean and nest. Yeah, and she made and I'm like, I'm like, what are you not? Oh, you're cleaning. What are you doing? But it's just it's hard to describe. Yeah, what they're doing. Do you know right? why? Okay, I'm a fairly She's well. Like, pre- I'm nesting. I'm like what is that? <laughs> I'm a fairly well-prepared person, yeah. which is a something that I picked up from my mom. She's mm-hmm. very methodical in how mm-hmm. she approaches things, which given her background yeah, in medicine, she had no to nurse. Be, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she had to do things like, now she's not what they call a uh, floating nurse, mm-hmm. which was someone who would kind of go between, or maybe I'm getting the name wrong. So if you're in the medical profession, excuse me. <laughs> Dan, if you're the boot.com. But there is some kind of like supervisory nurse at the surgical level mm-hmm. Who goes from OR to OR making sure everything's cool. Mm -hmm. And she was not that. She was actually a physician's first assistant in the the surgical center. But one of the things that she would do as part of making sure things were ready to go is look at the The spread of tools. Mm -hmm. And she has to think ahead of, okay, what are we going to need to do this? And what are we going to need when it goes wrong? Right. Because if you nick an artery or you find a problem in there you didn't expect... How do we know? Yeah. yeah. You don't have, have an hour to replan. Yeah. yeah. You don't use 30 of those little clipper things and say, oh, well, I'm just going to stack 32 of them in case. No, yeah. You stack 60. Yeah. yeah. And so you or what? I'm not a medical professional. Right. You get the point. So yeah. that's, that's the correct point, though. And so mm-hmm. I picked that up. And this is the reason I love winter. Because with my coat pockets, it is the only way I can carry all the things I want to carry. You got to get yourself a man fanny. Well, <laughs> I'm not a man fan. A man A manny. No, that'd be a manicure. Yeah. A uh, manny penny. But this is where Dan ruined me, right? I know that I can be an organized person with all this. Yeah. I'm a minimalist, right? Yeah, it doesn't have yeah. to be. I knew him for 30 years. I never carried a pin around with me because he I was always like, did. Dan. I, I was that you person. have a pin. I knew he had a pin. I have three on me right now. Exactly. Here's one in my, one of them is in my hand at the moment. Exactly. And all of I'm these the came from my left pocket. Mm-hmm. I am that friend too. Yeah. Like I always had everything, snacks, like yeah. you name it. Right. <laughs> and something. the only reason I can do this is if I have a coat, I cannot yeah. do mm-hmm. this. I wish whoever it is that decided that cargo pants and cargo shorts are out of fashion needs to be shot. Oh yeah, my Find, like seeks them out yes them. the only shorts i own are either gym shorts which are like yeah you know, whatever but our cargo shorts because i go hiking yeah. they're just hard to find and i need to carry certain things so i don't die because yeah. i do like really a handful of ticks to chew on well yeah <laughs> i mean because they fight the other ticks yeah exactly they're in my beard trying yeah. to kill me so. precisely yeah you just mm-hmm. set the lone star ticks loose on the deer ticks exactly. and just see how that works out or uh, carry a possum with you. Yeah. They eat lots of ticks. Pocket full of murder hornets. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You never know. <laughs> if there's a bear, I'm like, murder hornets, I throw them right out of them. And hope they go that way. <laughs> that sounds I mean... like an amazing metal song. <laughs> Pocket full of murder hornets. <laughs> or a Christmas song. <laughs> <laughs> right. Why not both? <laughs> <laughs> really deranged. Yeah. yeah. Actually, one of the hardest metal songs i've ever heard was white wine spritzer sweet <laughs> it's by that oh killy do killy the, the ned flanders yeah. joke yeah like death metal band they actually allowed them to perform it in the closing credits of the simpsons on one episode <laughs> nice. and that was the song they picked was white wine spritzer nice and anyway but yeah put together a little package of stuff and I think, if nothing else, the simple exercise of just going down that checklist, like when I'm packing to go on a trip, what I do to make sure I've got everything I need is I go through my morning routine because most people do that pretty much on autopilot anyway. So think, OK, I just got out of bed. What am I doing? Okay, I walk into the bathroom. First thing I do is grab the mouthwash. 
Okay, mouthwash needs to go in the bag. Yep. Then after the mouthwash, I brush my teeth. Okay, toothbrush, toothpaste. I take nothing. Well, yeah, you can do that too. I, I, I no, literally, I, I don't take underwear. I don't take socks. I don't take toothpaste, toothbrush. You buy them there? Absolutely. No. You, you land. You Look. go to the nearest Walmart. Here's the thing: when you travel, and uh, this is anybody, you take a suitcase. You know, a suitcase, maybe one of those roller things. I take a backpack. No. And I don't mean like well, a hiking backpack. I mean yeah. like school textbook backpack. Yeah, I'm back. too That's organized. It. I have Mm-mm. traveled across the country with my camel back and nothing else. Okay. I already talked about a situation in Japan with something else. <laughs> yeah. But I did have a situation with leggings. So I tried that once. I don't I'm too have tall. either of those problems. <laughs> so, I'm 6'3", but I don't wear leggings. I know, so. <laughs> but I'm just saying that like you just never know. Or like if you go to a place that doesn't... I don't know. I'm also like super particular about like my skincare routine and my mm-hmm. makeup and all that. I could never do that. You like baffle me. Yeah. Like I no, have to I, make sure Mike's shit is packed. When like, I, I travel mm-hmm. and when I, <laughs> when I go hiking, I do minimalist. Well, hiking my, makes sense. Yeah. Hiking. I can understand. Right. And I would have a different situation. Yeah. Because because if you, if you stop yeah. and brush your teeth in the middle of a hike, that's, <laughs> I mean, maybe the ticks will look at you weird. Yeah, exactly. Maybe <laughs> like you've got a few too many but... ticks caught in your teeth. Right. <laughs> it's gone a little weird, but yeah, I, I'm just saying it's mm. possibly a, a thing that might work for people is go through your routine in the same way with gaming. Mm-hmm. What are the things you use when you game? Mm-hmm. You show up, well, you got your character sheet, your pencil, your dice, whatever. You pass notes during the game. You need a snack. You need this or that soda. I don't know. Are Wine. You, are you mm. prone to bourbon. a health? Are you prone to a health problem? Not I mean, having enough bourbon. Well, are you so? We've got someone in our group right now who gets frequent migraines. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, if anything, he uses to treat those. But if I was in his shoes, I would. You know, that's something I'd. In my case, spring. I say in my case, it'd be Valium, Mm -hmm. Anxiolytics. Mine's my asthmatic medicine. Yeah, your (laughs) albuterol or blow or whatever it is. (laughs) Blow blow works great. (laughs) I mean, that opens a wide. (laughs) To kind of pivot here from the advice we're giving i want to try and give a different kind of advice now the game itself all of this stuff about bug out bags about under planning about over planning about getting kind of wound up about you know should we hug or not or you know making people feel comfortable again like dan said it's fit to use you do what you need to do for your group but all of that's done now the rubber has hit the road as it were Mm -hmm. and we're actually gaming So what do we do? Is it different? Do we have advice for that first actual game? Like I said, I think it would be very helpful to just go over everything again. You know, go over characters, go over like just the general plot. Even if you have met frequently, I feel like you just take in things differently when you're in person versus on virtual. So it might be good to just get everybody on the same page, in my opinion. I think that that was like the best thing to do. Just make sure everybody's still on the same page. I think... She's got it mm-hmm. dead right. But something I would add to that is there are two ideas that usually go together. And I think it is very important to unhitch these two ideas in this situation, which is usually when people do high planning, they also have high expectations. Mm-hmm. And I think that has to be unhitched here. I mean, don't go nuts planning. Be flexible. Be a little loosey goosey. Don't please don't go psycho here. But a degree of planning, I think, is great for all the reasons we just talked about, but hitch that to low expectations. Mm -hmm. If we get together, we have a good time, we're comfortable face-to-face hanging out with each other, that's a success. That's a win. That's the extent of what you're looking for. You almost want to treat it like an anime, though, like where they have like those side episodes that are Mm -hmm. off from the story plots. Maybe that's something you can do if you wanted to try to get something done is get back in the groove of it by doing something like that doing an off episode or like the characters do something quirky and fun or you know just mm-hmm. to keep that energy still have oh. the chad and brandon beach episode well, OVA. Yeah. That's, every episode. that's not a side episode oh. <laughs> i think from that i think that there can be two philosophies here mm-hmm. one philosophy is the game itself that session do it low key maybe explore some of the side plots you know everybody's still getting used to each other then there's the other side of it right and so the other side, which I think is totally legit with the low key thing, mm-hmm. that's very good. I was going to do something different, and I am going to do something different for the Blades in the Dark game for our first session back. It's the exploding car treatment where everybody is kind of like saying around, don't know what to do as a game master, have a car blow up. 
mm-hmm. near them. And it's like, oh my God, what's that? And everyone has to spring into action. You don't know why the car blew up as a game master, but you know, you'll figure it out. But they're moving now. But that's sort of what I was going to do mm-hmm. or am going to do is I am going to basically hit the guys. Like once I get them settled and say, okay, now the game is starting, instead of starting with this sort of action that Dan was doing, which was actually a really amazingly good action. I'm going to start with something else because with blades, you can kind of play around with time and how things work. And I'm going to have, and I can't say what I'm going to do because we didn't f***ing game last week and it was my fault. And I'm going to do something different, right? right? I'm going to come at this situation from a different angle, which is going to do this really overused term is going to subvert their expectations Mm -hmm. and it's going to put them in a sort of critical thinking mode of oh i did not expect to have to deal with that you know it's like i remember what happened the last because we're not talking about a game that has gone on hiatus here yeah. We are talking about a content, not just our blades in the dark game. This advice, right? This episode, yeah. is not about a hiatus game. It's about you've been gaming regularly online, mm-hmm. just not face to face, just not face to face, and things are a little different. Yeah. So I want, as a game master, I want to hit them. I want them thinking. I want them moving, and I don't want them kind of questioning or getting comfortable. I want them reacting. I don't want them sitting there coming up with plans and ideas and that uncomfortable, oh, well, maybe we have this plan and then somebody makes a joke and, oh, hey, you know, you saw so-and-so last week at the bar. I haven't been to that bar in a year year. and a half and (laughs) and suddenly we're not gaming again. No, I want to hit them hard Mm -hmm. and I want them moving now. Right. But again, if this were a hiatus, be a little different. Well, and yeah, I think there's value in both of them. Absolutely. I, I don't know. I just, I think back to like, I'm super in Mass Effect mode because I, I got the mm-hmm. remasters. <laughs> but like in three, they released the DLC if you didn't play it where you get to have a party with all of your past members. And is they it like a birthday party? <laughs> Citadel. <laughs> kind of. Uh, <laughs> kind of is. It's, it's kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you haven't done that DLC and haven't, well, if you. I'll assume if, you're talking about Citadel. Yeah. Where, yeah. Where you have all your people over at your house. Yeah. And you and have really a party. A party par- it, no, yes. I'm serious. Like Re- Rex. <laughs> I thought you meant like no, the no, party no. goes on an adventure. You no, actually get no. to you actually get to say whether people get drunker. Wow. And so then like nice. you catch Rex it, like crying in your shower. Like it's, <laughs> it's an amazing DLC. Yeah. But I, they put it in three to where you have until a certain point to do it. And but, it, has, it has another another plot. The, no, it the, has a whole house, other side. The plot. house party is the B the plot. B plot. <laughs> I won't yeah. even tell you what the yeah, A plot it's so is because yeah. it's a huge spoiler. So I won't. It's, even it's tell really you good if you haven't is. played it. The legendary comes with it, but if you ha- if you're playing just the old versions of it, it's mm-hmm. get it. It's worth it. But yeah. they put it in a point, and you can't do it past a point where three gets really intense like yeah. when all the earth stuff starts happening the train has left the station yeah, so you can't go like, back to the house party. that would be my advice is maybe yeah. do a house party episode right you know what i mean where you yeah. guys can get back into your character amongst each other because mm-hmm. like i said i feel like what i've witnessed at least in my gaming groups is so many people just are different online versus in yeah. person and so their character's personality changes so it's kind of like a check like a check mm-hmm. on who your character is you know, like be Rex crying in a shower. You know what yeah. I mean? Like do that stuff so that you can get reacquainted kind of with your environment again. And I, and I could really back up the statement. I am different online than in person. Mm-hmm. I think back to my Skies of Glass character, Gil, right? Gil, I, I believe I played him pretty consistently, but there is an aspect of Gil that I haven't played. I, I wasn't able to play online as much. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we joke about Brandon and I have a bromance and that sort of thing. We sit next to each other and Brandon and I get along really really great i really love the guy clearly clearly and (laughs) our characters always had a sidebar going on to the point of distraction we were bad actors in this which Uh, especially with the one omni mic yeah it actually did create some problems we could do a whole episode on brandon and i's sins of gaming that we did but that was actually part of gill gill and dr poe brandon's character had a relationship separate of the plot they were not docking like they, <laughs> man you're docking <laughs> that totally threw me off they Sorry. had a they had a relationship that was separate of the plot right. and we always had this sort of sidebar going on where we had a running commentary i mean part of it sure was a little bit of peanut gallery distraction bad stuff for us but 
another in character. Another part of it was it was very in character. Mm-hmm. Some sometimes it was very funny, but sometimes it was like, okay, these two characters are talking about real sh- going on between them and about other characters. That is very much the game. Mm-hmm. And sure, yeah, we could have texted that and chatted and had a sidebar and even pulled into a side. No, it, it, it's so I'm spontaneous bad bad. with us. I'm it, bad at that. Yeah. Like. We always created, like in our couple times we've gamed through Discord, we created like sidebar rooms and I just never ended up in there. I will say that Zoom has a good setup for that because you can Mm -hmm. do like that room, but I don't know. I just never could do it. Yeah. I just was never good at that. Yeah. I'm I'm not good. I'm sure some people are. Yeah. And I think that's great, but. I feel like I miss out on too much somewhere else if I do that. I don't know. In person, you can still hear and witness. I can sit here and I can disrupt the game with Brandon yet still listen to the right. game I'm disrupting. Yeah. I Well, and I also think it's worth noting that while it was somewhat distracting, the bigger issue it caused is it's not completely unique to our group, but it's very unusual, mm-hmm. which is we were also trying to accommodate mics and right. what the mics are we picking had up. one mic. And well, and even once we reset it up where everyone has an individual mic, it's still one audio stream. Yeah, you're still going to yeah. pick up this, some people. This table side talk, I mean, it can be distracting, but there's ways to limit that. Mm-hmm. And I could give advice on this, but once again, it's kind of unique to when you're recording it for a podcast, and I don't right. know what percentage of our audience that really helps. Mm-hmm. So I, I think we had some unique struggles there that yeah. I don't know would really apply, but nonetheless... That is a point of that is something that the dynamic changes because your ability to just grab someone and to whisper to mm-hmm. them without I'm, dropping out of the I'm, channel. Yeah, I am in character. Gil had a scene. It was intense. I am in Gil's headspace. Gil sure. is a very intense individual with a lot of problems that I have to put myself in because I'm not Gil, thank God. <laughs> And that scene ends and Poe is there and I am in that headspace and Brandon's in that headspace and we continue to ping off of each other. It's like you said, though, online, that scene happens and then I have to type on the keyboard, hey, Babs, you want to drop to the other channel. Well, what's it about? Well, it's an in-character thing that we just talked about. What about the Marlene thing? Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Oh, wait, now I have to do... Well, then if wait, you guys are yeah, having a side it's conversation... Like it's gone. But also say you guys are having a side conversation mm-hmm. in the van while other characters are doing something out in front of the van, yeah. and all of a sudden bad guys pop up and shoot the van with a rocket launcher. Okay, where are you guys? Right. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, well, we're in chat room number three yeah, having our can makeout you, Can you guys this? come back and... Okay, so this is happening. Wait, what? Right. And where do these vampires come from? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's not for that reason. It's yeah. not for our usual reason if you were watching Doctor Who porn parodies. <laughs> right. It's because you guys were having a legitimate in character mm-hmm. moment of character development. Great. Perfectly good gaming content, but it occurs differently in person yeah. than well, it does. Well, the game master online. isn't privy to it either. Right. So you yeah. wouldn't, the, the he, I shouldn't say that, but they wouldn't get to use it well, later. Yeah. I mean, maybe Dan didn't keep tabs on every single thing Brandon and I were saying, mm-hmm. but he was able to get the sense that Gil and Poe had. A certain relationship. Well, and you Maybe. catch enough select phrases yeah. that you could sort of get the gist of, even if you didn't know Gil the detail. Gil is upset. Poe is sad. But now Poe is happy and Gil is happy. And okay, so that's cool. Yeah. And, yeah. I yeah. mean, it, overhearing three words, wearing her face. I knew instantly what mm. that sidebar was about. And right. About, and if you listen to actual play, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't. Well, com. Yeah. I mean, it's only, what, like 60 episodes that are four to eight hours a piece? I mean, yeah, cool. sure. You just blast through that. Yeah, exactly. Just get that yeah. done tonight. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Write a report. Write a report. Let us know how much So <laughs> I would love to read a one-page book report on this guy's well, A one-page? One-page. One-page. That would be a writing exercise. That That's the exercise. Especially, right yeah, if you don't like, do, like... Oh, yeah, don't play around with the margins. I mean, it's... Yeah. it's yeah. You have to write it double-spaced. Yeah, write a yeah. double space and mm-hmm. a twelve point regular font. Anyway, yeah. and you just college can't re- rule. You just can't repeat Gil is an asshole over and over and over again. We well, because Gil wasn't even there in the first half of the game. That's true. So That's true. Anyway, he's in prison in space. I hope everyone is still doing okay, and you guys have made it through these whatever times without 
too much damage to your life. Maybe you're doing great. You know, if that's yeah. the case, hey, more power to you. Or maybe you're not. And if that's the case, no, there's you know people Sorry, out there man. that love you and care about you and mm-hmm. still want you to keep on keeping on. So as for, well, everyone, have a great week and great games, and we will catch you next time. See ya. This has been a production of Fear the Boot, copyright 2021. Listeners are free to use this episode in a non-commercial endeavor, so long as credit is provided to feartheboot.com. You can find previous episodes and other resources at feartheboot.com. If you wish to support this show and its related endeavors, you can do so at patreon.com slash feartheboot.